agree that the launch of OpenAI's ChatGPT was something of a revolution. By ingesting a huge amount of text, from, you know, a significant fraction of the internet, this AI system can learn the underlying representations of what these words mean, how they relate, do a little bit of something that is sort of like reasoning, sort of like understanding what you as a user want, some of the time, not always, not perfectly, and try to help you. Before its arrival, people had interacted with chatbots on e-commerce platforms, and while they were somewhat helpful, they seemed to have a limited range of answers. But with advancements in natural language processing, ChatGPT came and blew things out of the water. ChatGPT does what chatbots of the past used to do, but a lot better, and with a much larger range of outputs, including writing fully functioning code and creating baking recipes. However, it's not even been a year since that revolutionary platform was launched, and a company called Anthropic has launched a ChatGPT contender called Claude. Now, before this startup company launched its response to the ChatGPT domination, tech giants had been scrambling to catch up and probably take over. Almost immediately after ChatGPT was launched to resounding success, Google quickly launched Bard, but it, unfortunately, had a terrible public demo by giving an obviously wrong answer. Bought a floral pattern shirt, but you want it in Bleu Rouge instead. You can use multi-search for that too. Let's see how that works with a live demo. We are missing the... <laughs> We have no, okay, we're gonna move on. We can't find the phone. Bard is still being used though, but many agree that it is nowhere near as good as ChatGPT. The value of Bard was its direct connection to Google giving web access better than any other AI tool, but the underlying models and processing of the text let it down. Microsoft, not wanting to replicate the mistakes of Google and launch an untested and clearly inferior product, tried integrating directly with OpenAI and investing over $10 billion in the company in order to do so. This also gave them early access to GPT-4 before it was released to the general public. For a while, the only way you you could access GPT-4 was through the beta version of the Bing browser, but this didn't stop them from having teething issues either. There were many reported instances where the bot behaved wildly inappropriately and offered very dangerous language in responses. For example, it compared one test user to Hitler, proclaiming the user was the evilest person in the world, and at the other end of the spectrum, it told a New York Times journalist, I love you, which was one of its least problematic responses. Aside from the tech giants, other startups have launched their own thing, and at this point, the market is kind of saturated with these natural learning AI tools, but nothing has stuck like OpenAI's ChatGPT. That being said, Anthropic's Claude might shake things up, especially considering that it was developed by two former OpenAI employees. There have been reports that some members of the OpenAI staff were not comfortable with the direction that top management was taking the company, specifically OpenAI's transactions with Microsoft in 2019. The original purpose of the company was more safety and ethically focused. They felt that the investment from big tech was the turning point where these tools were going to be overly commercialized. Instead of staying behind and trying to change the culture, some of them decided to leave and form their own AI company. The two key people in the cessation and subsequent company creation are siblings Daniela Armode and Dario Armode. Interestingly, Dario used to be OpenAI's vice president of research. These weren't low-level employees. They might not have liked the direction that the company was headed, but having been part of the team that developed the widely successful ChatGPT, they would be right to be confident in their ability to do it again. So, in 2021, they founded Anthropic with an emphasis on responsible AI usage and safety. Their first work, which they want to be a direct chat GPT rival, is Claude. Of course, Claude is a more personable name than chat GPT, so Anthropic already has one up on OpenAI there. What's more, in explaining what Claude is, Anthropic mentions that it is an AI assistant that is supposed to be helpful, honest, and harmless, which is in line with the company's ethos of responsible and safe AI usage. To make this possible, Claude was built on a constitutional AI, as opposed to chat GPT's reinforcement learning from human feedback known as RLHF. The basic difference here is that with RLHF, humans rank outputs generated by ChatGPT from the same prompt, and then ChatGPT learns and memorizes those preferences for future prompts. But with constitutional AI, a model does the rankings based on a set of underlying principles, which is its constitution. This is supposed to eliminate bias and error in determining what's harmful and what's not. But you should also know that the underlying principles are determined by humans. Bias in the humans programming the constitution would still have an effect, but the argument is that they are more easily adapted and changed rather than being embedded in the training data and very difficult to change as with WLHF. To be sure that Claude is actually not going to produce harmful or offensive content, it is fed some red team prompts. These prompts are supposed to trick Claude into producing harmful, false or offensive content, so it passes the test if it doesn't, and apparently Claude passed with flying colours, at least that's what Anthropic says. Now if it is true that Claude can never be offensive or harmful, it would be another area where Claude has 
has beaten ChatGPT because there have been a number of reports of ChatGPT going off script, fabricating truths, and even making harmful recommendations to people. No more so than the underlying technology when used by Bing comparing the human it was chatting with to Hitler, as mentioned earlier in the video. If it's possible to have something that does all that ChatGPT does, but manages to be a lot safer, there is absolutely no doubt that many people will be making the switch. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. Claude is still relatively new. It still isn't as widely available as ChatGPT and only entered beta testing in March of this year after months of alpha testing. By the way, the alpha testing was carried out in partnership with Notion, Quora, and DuckDuckGo. And these partners had the privilege of introducing Claude to their users before the wider market could get their hands on it. For Quora users, they have been able to use Claude through Quora's AI chat app Po for a while now. And according to Anthropic, the reviews have been glowing, with some people pointing out how more conversational Claude is than ChatGPT. The fact that Anthropic is not even hiding the fact that they are trying to take over ChatGPT's market is something. Users of Notion, a connected workspace platform, have also found significant uses for Claude, and DuckDuckGo has integrated Claude into Duck Assist, making information finding that much easier. Part of the advantage for these companies is that Claude can accept up to 75,000 words in its prompt. This means it's possible to search and correlate data across huge data sets. This is particularly useful to Notion and Quora, as they often have large sets of data that people would want to use in order to get specific, relevant answers to them. With Claude, they can. Other companies that were not part of the alpha test have also integrated Claude. Robin AI, a legal infrastructure business, has integrated Claude to help with evaluating parts of a legal contract and suggesting more layperson-friendly language. Assembly AI also now uses Claude to help transcribe audio data. Companies are not the only ones that have been using Claude, though. As I mentioned earlier, you can access Claude via the Poe app, and since March of this year, Poe has been available on both Android and iOS. Alternatively, you could access Claude via Slack if it is enabled in your workspace. Claude on Slack is actually really interesting because you can at Claude in your conversations and channels, and Claude will respond. This response can then be viewed by everyone in the conversation. It also allows you to ask it to summarize the previous week's work, or get the action items left in chats that might have been missed. So both Poe and Slack are available to anyone. But you have to agree that when it comes to accessibility, ChatGPT has one up on Claude. You only have to go to the OpenAI website to access ChatGPT, but it seems like there are a few more hoops to jump through to get to Claude. However, Claude is still completely free, so there's that. Also, we might need to cut Claude some slack because it is still relatively new. But is Claude actually better than ChatGPT? Well, let's look into it. One of the things that have been found out is that both Claude and ChatGPT are not exactly the best at complex math. However, while ChatGPT would confidently give you the wrong answer, Claude is more humble and aware of its limitations. It will often just politely tell you that the problem is beyond its capacity. I guess this ties back to Claude's supposed inability to produce harmful content. So, point one is for Claude. In answering complex questions, Claude is not exactly perfect, and it has in fact been known to invent answers instead of just taking the high road. What's more, like ChatGPT, Claude does not have memory between sessions. So, you can't refer to a previous session when discussing it with Claude. Although this problem could easily be solved if Anthropic introduced a similar style chat system, the underlying technology is effectively the same, it's just the app that is built on top that has no memory. Other tests have been carried out comparing ChatGPT and Claude, but it doesn't seem like Claude is that much better, if at all, than ChatGPT. They are both not very good at math or remembering details of TV shows. ChatGPT is better at writing code than Claude, while Claude is funnier and more conversational, apparently sounding less robotic, but they are both really good at summarizing text. So, the bottom line? People might not be switching from ChatGPT to Claude just yet, partly because it is not as easily accessible, and partly because it is not that much better, if at all, than ChatGPT. However, it is a strong contender, better than any of the products from the big tech companies, especially because it is supposed to be unable to produce harmful content. Plus, it is still relatively new, so OpenAI better watch its back. Importantly, if you use Notion or DuckDuckGo, you're already using Claude, and you just don't know it. With the revelations about the model behind the supposedly groundbreaking GPT-4 coming to light in July 2023, the battle between Anthropic and OpenAI might be much closer than it looks. We're writing a video on the GPT-4 secrets as you watch this, so subscribe and turn on notifications to be alerted when we drop that video. Do you think that OpenAI will be beaten by Anthropic? Do you even care? Let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.